Hey Shelby Bells, it's Shelby. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in for another video. In today's video, you guys, we have to talk about Tana Mojo and Trisha Paytas because Trisha was featured on Tana's brand new podcast, Cancelled, and it had a lot of tea in it. So if you're interested in hearing more about that drama, then make sure that you keep on watching. Okay, I know both of these people have done some crazy things. I know both of these people have caused a lot of drama. They've been canceled for whatever reason or the other one. But I have to just admit to you, I love me a good Trisha Paytas rant and I love me a good Tana Mojo story time. And that's just truth all day long. If that's I'm not biased towards them at all, but let me tell you, I even dressed up like Tana Mojo in the Hefner video for Halloween one year. <laughs> I went through a really big Tana Mojo phase a few years ago, and uh, I, I love, am I gonna say that I love everything that Tana does now? No, I don't. I think that a lot of her behaviors during COVID and stuff are kind of questionable. Ever since the Jake Paul thing, it just kind of threw me off with her, but I used to love a good Tana Mojo story time. And honestly, I still kind of live for a good Tana Mojo story time. I mean, we are not gonna discredit, we're not gonna just like forget about that infamous, horrible apology video that she put out that was like 15,000 jump cuts in it. That was literally ridiculous. But I, I do love a good and fresh Tana Mojo story time. When you combine Tana Mojo, Trisha Paytas, into a podcast called Cancelled where they're just talking trash and like spilling tea and just like literally being their iconic Cancelled cells. I literally like lived for it. It was so entertaining to me. I watched a little bit of the other episode of the Cancelled podcast as well and that was also very interesting to me. I just think that this this format is really really good for Tana. Tana excels with story times. Tana excels at talking and I really really do think this is a it was a, it's a great idea for her to launch a podcast and I think it's going to bring her a lot of success because that is what people when Tana was in her prime and what made Tana so iconic and what made her shoot up to stardom was her gift of gab, okay? To be a, a successful content creator on YouTube or an influencer, you have to have the ability to influence somebody, you have to have a, a talent of some sort, or you need to have like the gift of gab and be able to draw people in, okay? I don't know which one of those I have at this point, to be honest with you. What made Tana succeed is her gift of gab, okay? She just, this was what it is, okay? With Trisha Paytas, kind of as well, but I think what drew people in about Trisha was her rawness and her realness and her just ability to just turn on the camera and just show all of what she's feeling and then just literally not edit it at all and just upload everything, word vomit and all, up onto the internet. That was what launched Trisha Paytas into stardom, right? Anyway, when you combine these two people, it was really, really, really interesting. And it was almost like, um, I mean, dare I say iconic. I thought that their like energy together was really, really cool. It's kind of like the pairing that we never know, we never knew we needed. Now, if you're looking for people who are just like, kind of like playing it safe, and just kind of like people that are trying to keep it friendly and people that are just kind of trying to like, you know, stay under the radar, then this isn't for you. This isn't a duo for you. And maybe those people aren't your people. But with me, I'm looking to be entertained, honey, okay? I'm looking for people that know the tea, know the gossip, aren't afraid to speak their minds on the tea and the gossip. And that's exactly what they gave me. What was really interesting, interesting to me about this podcast is it was almost like, like, I don't know, it, they just felt like they meshed so well together, but they did mention that they like really haven't hung out since they hung out at David's house or something like that with David many, many years ago. So it's not like these two are friends and hang out all the time, but I could see like why they would be such a good pair or literally they'd be at each other's throats. I think it would start off as in being really close and then they would like get at each other's throats and it would just blow up. Honestly, I, I really truly do think that. So maybe, uh, maybe I'm like down for a good and fresh Tana and Trisha friendship just so we can watch it all unfold and watch 
should explode. I don't know. I loved how Trisha brought out this side of Tana that kind of like got Tana to talk about issues that Tana doesn't really normally address because Tana even said herself on the podcast that she's normally kind of like scared to say certain things or scared to be, you know, to involve herself in something because then somebody might go and pull up a tweet from like 2014 or something and like exposure to the house or something. So it, it's just one of those things where it was really um, cool to see Trisha bring out that side of Tana that kind of addresses at least more head on than Tana had ever done in the past. Some of these issues where when it pertains to David Dobrik and Shane Dawson and all of that. And well, I really, okay, this is just my conspiracy, my conspiracy theory allegedly. These are opinions, not facts. But Trisha kept bringing up the Shane Dawson thing with Tana. If you are not caught up on that tea, a long, long, long time ago, I mean, I'm talking like 2016 or 2017 or something like that. I mean, Tana was like either just turned 18 or maybe not even fully 18 years old yet. Tana did a collaboration with Shane Dawson, okay? Because Tana and Shane are friends or they were friends. I'm not really sure the status of their friendship nowadays, but I do know that they were friends at one point. Well, oh, I'm I forgot to highlight. I forgot to highlight, you guys. I need to highlight. Hello? Okay. Hello, we forgot to highlight. I'm so sorry. Mm -mm. Hello, we forgot to highlight. Hello? How am I forgetting to highlight? Literally. You know, I thought I looked in the mirror and I thought I looked kind of basic. And maybe that's why. Maybe I look basic because I didn't put on any highlighter. You know, I don't care what anybody says about highlighting. You're never going to take my highlighter away from me, honey. Okay? I don't care what the trends are in makeup or whatever. Your girl's gonna stay highlighted and glowy and hoey for life, okay? Maybe the degree on how blinding I'll go will change, but your girl's gonna stay glowy. The lighting literally is so bad in here now. I need to get new ring light, new light box, and get good to go with this again because you can only see from this angle. You can't even see it from this angle barely anymore so when i'm getting ready i just pile on the highlighter over here and then i get into the car and i'm like oh my god i'm like blinded from over here on this side but what was i saying okay the shane dawson and tana thing okay so in a collaboration many many years ago tana bojo did a video with shane dawson where she urinated on him and that was the whole video is tana urinated on shane dawson and Trisha kind of brought this up in the podcast and was saying like, she brought it up basically. And you know, cause it was kind of pushing, like asking Tana like, so were you underage? Were you da 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 And I feel like she was kind of pulling and like hoping to get some sort of like major drama to happen because of this. And cause you, as you guys know, Shane and Trisha are no longer friends. They do not mess with each other anymore. They are not okay. Trisha went off on Shane on uh, the Frenemies podcast many times on the internet many times. Trisha Paytas does not mess with Shane Dawson anymore. She does not mess with Rylan Adams anymore. She does not mess with Jeffree Star anymore. And she made that very, very, very public knowledge on her TikToks, YouTube channel, Frenemies podcast, Twitter, everything. We know now that Trisha Paytas does not mess with Shane, Rylan, or Jeffree. So it kind of felt like to me, and this is just my conspiracy theory allegedly, that Trisha was trying to pull out some drama from Tana about the Shane Dawson thing. Because let us not forget, Shane Dawson has been popping his little head out and like making appearances in Rylan's videos. He's been posting on his Instagram more. He's been posting Instagram stories more with his face. And people are saying that Shane Dawson's gonna come back soon. A lot, a lot of people have speculated that Shane Dawson will come back in October for a horror movie and that whole vibe and do some sort of like Halloween type scary horror thing because he's talked about it a lot in the past. So my personal belief is that, and if you don't agree with this belief, that's okay. Leave me your opinions on what you think Trisha was trying to do with this in the comments section down below. I just hurt my wrist. Oh my God, that hurt. Hello, why did that hurt so bad? It felt like to me, like she was trying to get Tana to say that she was underage when she urinated on Shane Dawson. Okay, that whole thing, oh, to me, in my opinion, oh, I don't care how old you are, that's a little twisted for me, okay? But it felt like Trisha was trying to pull that out to have it on the podcast as evidence that Shane did something like that. That's just what it felt like to me, okay? And I know I'm being messy for saying that, and I know that 
you know, whatever, but it's my opinion. This video is for entertainment purposes only. That's just my opinion on all day long, okay? That's just what I felt, and I don't know. I, I just felt like she was doing that. But outside of that, they did talk about, you know, like OnlyFans and stuff like that. It really was, a lot of it was them complimenting each other. A lot of it was them hyping each other up. A lot of it was like, you know, it, it was it was good, it was good. I really, really enjoyed the podcast. I thought it was good. I would love to see Trisha on there again, but I know she was just a guest. It's not like she's gonna be a like continuous guest on the show or anything, even though that would be literally iconic. Um, I don't think that was really the vibe for it, but I thought it was a great podcast. I thought they did a great job with it. And I'm so greasy, it is so hot outside. I'm just getting so greasy, you guys. And I'm just here for it. I'm here for the Tana and Trisha collab on the podcast. I thought it was a great first guest. And I thought it really, really fit for the canceled podcast to have one of the queen, one of the other queens of being canceled herself on the podcast with her. That's just my opinion on it. I thought it was a great, great job. So anyway, my opinion doesn't really matter. What's important is you guys' opinion. So let me know y'all's opinion on Tana B or Trisha, excuse me, Trisha being on Tana's podcast in the comment section down below. Did you watch the podcast and what did you think about it? What do you think of the two queens of cancel being on the podcast together? I think she needs to have Nikita Dragon on there next. That's another queen of cancel. Who, who, who else? is like another queen of cancel or king of being canceled that we can have on the canceled podcast. Cause I think it would be cool to just have a bunch of canceled people like back to back to back to back to back. So I think we could have maybe, let's see, maybe like the next person could be like Nikita Dragon on the Tana Mojo canceled podcast. And then I think it would be really cool if they had like maybe Jacqueline Hill on the Tana Mojo canceled podcast. That would be iconic because you know, Jack Jacqueline Hill has been canceled many times to count we could have james charles oh my god oh my god if we had james charles on the podcast oh my god it would be literally iconic um but yeah that's i, I don't know let me know who you would like to see on tana mojo's canceled podcast in the comment section down below she did say she watches t channels on the podcast with like teaspoon and stuff who knows if she watch? she doesn't watch little old me let's just be honest she does not watch little old me but maybe if we get enough views on this video then tana will see it and she'll see the video and she'll listen to my suggestions on who should be next on the canceled podcast <laughs> anyway that's it for today's video you guys if you did enjoy it make sure you give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel down below don't forget to ring the bell so you're notified of all of my future videos when they do post and you can follow me on all of my social media at beauty by shelby that's S H E L B Y E, all at beauty by shelby and i'll leave that right up there on the screen for you so you can see it if you're enjoying the beauty by shelby vibes and want to see more then youtube should be suggesting a couple videos down below for you to choose from so i would love it if you did that but if you're just here to catch up on the tana mojo trisha paytas canceled podcast drama totally cool too girl appreciate your view love you so thank you so much for watching today's video you guys and i will see you in the next one bye guys